I know I've been on a Divorce Diaries rant for quite a while now, but I just want to take a break to just remind you about this podcast and how I record it. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast everywhere. Seriously. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor.fm to get started or download the Anchor app. You are now listening to the Divorce Diaries podcast with your host, well, that's a secret. No names, ages, or any other identifying characteristics will be used as we protect the young and innocent. You'll be taken on a journey as one man considers getting a divorce or remaining married. The Divorce Diaries daily entries chronicle the decision-making processes in real time as they unfold day by day. He hopes to add a bit of clarity to his sometimes muddled mess of a marriage. Cheating, overspending, sex, sadness and betrayal are the characteristics of this marriage. Is he making the right choice? Welcome to The Divorce Diaries. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else. At Divorce Diary Podcast Patreon page. Link below in description. Now for today's episode. Sometimes things just shake out this way. Adam Carolla is getting a divorce. He just announced it on his podcast. Well, we're going to start the show with some uh, sad personal news. Uh, Lynette and I are getting divorced. It's not something that I wanted to get or to do. I, I've never... I'm a product of divorce. Yeah. Um, Lynette's a product of divorce. It's not the kind of thing... It's just, well, no one ever signs up to get divorced. No. I got your wedding invitation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bittersweet. I was driving in thinking, I've got to talk about this. How do I talk about it? And then my phone lit up. Sorry. Gina said, you said a date. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. Um, we, some game. We've been separated for a few months. Um, it's hard. Uh, the kids come first, and, and they have, and they're doing well, Ugh. and uh, some say too well. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, <laughs> driving, benefiting. Did not, I wanted a little devastation. Right. I did not yeah. get much devastation. Hmm. Like, hey, what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Huh. Um, it's a, been a difficult time. Yeah. Um, I hear that. I, yeah. very, I very much didn't know this. That's, that's We've been together for 25 years. Um, okay. We're very different human beings. Mm-hmm. Um, we have different sets of philosophies, That's that's for sure. And um, I wish, you know, it's not about, it's not an event, it's not somebody with cheating, it's not, you know, chronic gambling or COVID. It's really just two people that were just that different and just had completely different processes and approaches to life and just couldn't couldn't get it couldn't meet in the middle somewhere and uh yeah it's hard i mean it's just it's a, it's 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 a weird thing everyone gets divorced or a lot of people get divorced no one around here really's gotten divorced but no? everyone else seems to get divorced well didn't uh andrew who was the one who would need it he got oh, divorced yeah. and moved back home yeah. oh yeah yeah so you got that I, should, you, I should i should send him a text and i i feel like and if i'm wrong i'm gonna be really sad the vast majority of us as uh, parents are divorced yeah mm-hmm. and so it's it's weird because everyone's parents are divorced and every time you turn on the news bill gates is getting divorced mm-hmm. or someone's getting divorced but just never was in my cards like it wasn't yeah. wasn't something that it wasn't i guess i, I didn't have as, as an option right. my thing was like whatever isn't working will make it work and um but ultimately if you can't make it work then it's probably right. you know for the good so i'm in a pretty good place yeah it's I, like it's was, been a long time coming at least it has from been what we said yeah i was yeah. not you know it was tough initially but i'm in a pretty good place now and you know i'm sort of getting on with it and enjoying my life but you know, I wanted to. Uh, oh yeah, there are no shows in Wisconsin. I'm, I'm going to uh, spread my wings. No. Uh, but it was tough, and I, you know, I wanted to let the audience know what was going on, but I didn't want to jump the gun, and I wanted to sort of make sure that you know the kids and the ducks were That's in, in line this in is a like row. A very, very big life event that you don't just want to sort of half-ass it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it is now official, mm-hmm. or you know, or it's getting filed, so right. it shall be. How- <laughs> Yes. How is your relationship amicable right now? Yeah. Or tough? Or yeah. Both? 
it's uh, it's okay. I mean, you know, we we you know work out a schedule, right. and everyone is sort of keeping up with it, and you know, it sucks, and you know, back and forth, and so Who's gonna we're doing a cars in nesting house? now. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So you know, you stay at the house. The kids don't leave the house. It's it's, oh, it's yeah. much okay. it's it's much better. Like when my dad got divorced, my parents got divorced. My dad just moved out and crashed on the sofa. Right. My grandparents' house. Oh yeah. So. There are just a few things that I take away from Adam Carolla's brave sort of, I don't know how brave it is because he just wanted to announce to people because he knows at some point someone's going to say something, then a rumor is going to get started. Um, he definitely took control over the narrative and just made sure that he was the one that told the news over his airways in his way on his time. And I love that about Adam Carolla. Him doing this announcement the way that he did is why I listen to him and why I respect him so much. It doesn't have as much to do with the fact that I do believe that Adam and I are wired in a similar fashion in that in this whole divorce thing. Um, that's why I'm recording this and that's why I'm changing my voice. I don't want people to know my business, but I want to talk about my business and I want to and I care about the people that are in my life and I don't want my actions to hurt them and recording this podcast or being private doing my diary entries and making them public is something that's good for me but I don't know how to do this without at least to some degree exposing other people um but anyway, back to what Adam said about just two people with two different sets of ideals. And um, I've been with my wife for close to the amount of time that Adam's been with his. And he says, you know, they've been together for 25 years and and I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Really, I'm really close to that. And when you understand or in my case, because I don't accept things and I don't accept reality on reality's terms. When you accept the fact that you and your wife do not, cannot, and are choosing not to see eye to eye on some very key points, it's probably the time that you need to divorce because we don't agree on how to, let's just say, one example is spending money and saving money. That's a really, we both have had very difficult, we've had a very difficult time together based on those different ideals. I know for a fact that my wife just feels restricted. I mean, she really does. She wants to buy what she wants when she wants. Like responsibilities and delayed gratification be damned. And that makes her feel good. And I want to conserve weight and plan financially. And that's what makes me feel good and comfortable and happy. So right there, we have to spend money just about every day, right? Whether it's um, the nickels and dimes that are adding up on your electric bill every day or going to P.F. Chang's to have uh, some dynamite shrimp uh, ordering Cadoba, buying some clothes for the kids, or splurging on some new candles on Amazon. I may say, oh, you know, let's, here's something that I did, actual thing, like, you know, my wife will buy, um, let's say, that pack of 100 tea candles. We don't have tea candle holders throughout the house, so she'll buy the 100 tea candles, get them and then set them in some public common area where people need to do something. And she got those and she didn't think through the fact that we didn't have tea candle holders and lighters to light them or, or some, some sort of apparatus to both display and use those tea candles. So she may take the tea candles, put them out on the table and light them with a match and leave the match next to the thing because she just really wants to light the candle. She just wants to get them lit. So 
because the wax will melt, she may grab uh, maybe like, let's say a little, a bowl or a saucer around the house or something, a small plate and set it on there. And I'll come back and I'll see the box of 100 tea candles minus one. So there's 99 on this table that's supposed to be like a decorative table where we keep things out for display. So there's now a box of open candles on that table. And next to it is one of the dinner plates or paper plate or paper towel folded up underneath of the lit silver tea candle that's not hidden inside of a nice decorative tea candle holder. And I'm like, what's going on? So now immediately I've challenged my wife and I've scrutinized her decisions and I've judged her. I'm like, what's going on? Because I'm surprised. And she's like, now she's got to justify herself. Hey, I, well, I got some tea candles because, you know, candles provide a good ambiance. I'm like, OK, well, why don't we get the big ones in the glass thing where it's like it's it's kind of already ready made to sort of look decent and you don't have to buy anything to sit under it because it's in this big glass thing from Walmart. It's like five bucks and we'll just get one. And it'll smell pretty good and we'll just light it. Well, I just saw these candles and they were a good deal. So I decided to get them and there's a hundred. So, you know, we'll, we won't run out. Okay, well, but you didn't get the thing that it goes in. So it, it's just, I mean, do you like the look of that paper towel that's folded up under them? And then she's got to defend herself again. And I've already given her the third degree. I've already interrogated her. And, I've all, and now I've made her feel bad about her purchase. Because of our different wiring, neither of us did anything wrong in this situation. But what how my wife operates and what would have made her feel good was me having said nothing. And if I said anything, it would be, oh, cool. Uh, the candle adds a nice feel to this room. Then my wife would have felt good about that. The candle adds something nice. She wanted to be complimented because my wife really, really, really wants to feel good. So I didn't make her feel good. In fact, I made her feel bad. And I know that if I were to rewire myself and I were to say something like, hey, this candle's great. How about I pick up one of those candle holders so we can hold it and, you know, they're better or something. It's better displayed. She would have probably said, wow, that sounds good. Now that's the problem. That just in my wiring, that doesn't feel righteous to me because I'm bothered. I just am. I'm bothered when there's a poorly thought out process or purchase. I'm bothered significantly. So I'm now going to die on the hill of principle because in my opinion, and which is not fact, but my opinion is my wife has sort of half baked ideas and I feel that she's very smart and I feel that she's very capable and able to maybe fully bake her ideas. I, I think she's able to do it and I don't think it's too much to ask that she does. Now, what I will say is that's unfair because in a weird way, I'm not choosing to be supportive of my wife and I'm not choosing to change. My shitty husband version of me is coming home and giving the third degree. Nobody wants to be married to that shit. It's hard for me to change that about myself because it's not about my wife. And unlike my ranting, bullshit, frustrated first 75 to 100 episodes of Divorce Diaries that probably are now up on Patreon, um, with I was just I was just angry as shit. I'm just angry and I'm resentful and I'm holding grudges. Angry, resentful, holding grudges, and that's what you hear coming forward in all of my anger-laden tirades. I'm not lying about anything, but I'm just so angry, and my perspective is totally clouded by the resentment that I have toward my wife. 
based on her actions or the situations that I found myself in financially and that the through lines that I find to certain struggles in my life directly go to my wife. Like my direct, the direct reason why I am in the financial predicament that I'm in. And when I say predicament, I just mean I don't have quite as much saved as I could. Not quite as much. There's a significant amount of money that I do not have saved because of, based on a few of my wife's wife's decisions over the years, I had to save up for another down payment for a house by myself. I was saving for my kids by myself. I've um, had to invest my own money by myself. Any savings have all been amassed by me and my um, any thoughts or hopes I have of paying for my my kids educations are going to be things that I execute. Um, Granted, we we may um, co-sign on loans, but I actually don't want to saddle my kids with too much debt. So if I want to take on any of their college um, expenses, that's going to come out of my pocket. And because I've been married, like Adam said, for about 25 years, um, but, but the, the relationship 25 years, we should have been able to save a significant amount of money with two people working, living somewhat responsibly for our children to start their lives. And we don't have that. And the direct reason is I've had to give, I've had to support this entire family financially and that it's just hard when there's another gainfully employed adult that's earning their own income but for the majority of the relationship they have been in amassed and grown their credit card debt that literally takes money and it gives it to banks for interest payments and it doesn't go into interest yielding accounts like money market accounts or CDs or even in the stock market. We just haven't been able to invest as a couple because um, one, I, I, I failed as a husband with this wife, with this woman. I haven't found a way and I'm no longer interested in trying to find a way to find middle ground, a happy medium, because I, I don't feel that my wife in practice, I feel like she would say it with her words. Oh yeah, we're on a team and I want to be a teammate with you and I'm trying to be, but in practice now, like Adam Carolla said, we're just two people with two vastly different ideals and ways of living our lives. It's really hard for two people like that to go the distance happily. Like my marriage, there's going to be a begrudging advancement to some hard solution, like a solution that nobody's really happy about, that no one's really leaning into. Like she's she's always going to make purchases that she might feel she has to hide because I'm going to give her the third degree. And I've always got to stop myself from giving my wife the third degree. That's not fair for either one of us. My wife should be totally free to make whatever purchases, whatever way she wants. It's her money, her agency. She can do whatever she wants. And I should be able to live a life of serenity and peace. And that level of stress that I've had to live under and around with my wife has just made me a worse version of me and it makes her defensive it makes her angry frustrated with me and it just it just divides us more and more and more and before there are too many years in the rearview mirror for me i really do need to get a divorce from this woman because we're just different and we're just different in ways that i don't like We're different in ways that cause both of us stress. We're different in ways that it doesn't foster an environment for a loving, warm, sexually charged teammate sort of relationship. 
And we've had these problems for a very long time. A very, very long time. And what reason do I have to even suspect that this will ever change? It's not that I want a divorce. I think I just know that I need one. Wow. That was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.